the journey into radical self-love. So what's actually happening when we enter these once every two year Venus retrograde periods is Venus is on the move. We've been watching her in the Western sky, right? We can see her conjunct the moon every month as she meets up with the new moon. And we've been watching her for months now on the Western horizon. But once every two years, she makes this journey of transformation where she leaves the sky altogether, appears to descend under the earth, right? Because then she rises again on the Eastern horizon at dawn. Venus is both the evening star and the morning star. And the retrograde period represents her transition from the gentle evening star to the fiery warrior morning star. So that is Venus on the move. And this is Venus in her chariot on the move from the, from the evening sky to the morning sky. And that's the journey that she will be taking us on between now and October. So the stories that go with this retrograde journey go back to the ancient Near East and to the Sumerians who held the goddess Inanna in the highest esteem. The later Greek goddesses are more fragmented, but Inanna was all the things. She was the lover. She was the warrior. She was the stateswoman. She was um, at the height of her powers at all times in all areas of life. So really an all-encompassing and powerful female figure, even overseeing war as well as peace and love. And she was associated with the planet Venus. So her story is embedded in the cycle of Venus. And her story is a story of a descent into the underworld, a gaining of wisdom, and an ascent again. So here's a beautiful contemporary imagination of the goddess Inanna and everything that she embodies. So as she descends to the underworld for 40 days, she disappears from the sky. This is what the Sumerian, the Sumerian astrologers were looking at. They were seeing this glorious goddess in the evening sky, and then they watched her disappear. And they imagined her journey beneath the earth. <clears throat> and knew that she would rise again in the East in 40 days. So what, what happens? Well, the goddess is gone. She's gone from the sky. All of that beauty, all of that light has disappeared from the upper world. What does that mean for us, for our life experiences? What, what is that missing part of the story? What happens to her when she's beneath the earth? What does she do in the underworld? Well, in the old story, what she does in the underworld is she meets her lost sister. It's, it's a long and complicated story and not a very pretty one, but the upshot is that she meets this abandoned sister in the underworld and becomes one with her and in a sense rescues that lost self from that place of darkness. This is how the myth plays out. And it also has, oh, here again, this is a really cool contemporary illustration of Inanna. As she descends to the underworld, she's stripped of all her worldly possessions. So she enters naked. And her dark sister, Ereshkigal, enthroned in the underworld, and how they face off and eventually come to terms is the whole story of her descent. Of course, we can see these two sisters as two aspects of the self. Parts that don't know each other, but come to know each other as we travel with Venus through those 40 days of underworld descent and ascent. So that's what the old myth looks like. What does this look like in modern psychological terms? One way we could think about this is she's doing her shadow work. She's leaving behind the fullness of her powers, everything that Inanna has in the upper world, wealth, power, love, um, success at war. She leaves it behind in order to claim that part of herself that is suffering, abandoned, and lost in the underworld. This is such a beautiful reflection of the idea of shadow work 
that work that we do in therapy or the work that we do with deep self-reflection where we come back to parts of ourselves that we have abandoned for all the normal reasons in life. It doesn't have to be because of a trauma, but just life goes on, gifts get forgotten, parts of the self get forgotten and left behind. Or there are things that we've never really seen about ourselves. Those gifts that our friends see that, that we can't see or on the other side of the coin, maybe some behaviors that aren't helping us that other people can see, but we have more difficulty seeing. And psychologically, when we speak about shadow work, we speak of that work of self-love, self-compassion and self-forgiveness that allows us to see fully all of those abandoned parts of the self and begin to integrate them into who we think of ourselves as, like the persona, our daytime upper world self. And this is a contemporary Korean illustration that I think speaks so poignantly to that act of self-love that embracing the shadow is. You know, those abandoned prickly parts, they can become beautiful when we witness them and embrace them. So, that is what our work is during any Venus retrograde. And the sign in which she retrogrades gives us a hint about the exact nature of that work. So what does the work look like? It looks like a personal underworld journey. So we are embodying that myth of Inanna in some sense in our own lives. We're temporarily leaving behind the outer persona and going deep within the self to check in on the parts of ourselves that are laboring alone, that have been abandoned, that feel lonely, that need to come to the surface. Sometimes this means we remember things from the past. It means that we work to integrate those abandoned parts of the self. It means we do our shadow work. That means we have to sometimes get uncomfortable, but it is a process of reclaiming our power. So think of those rewords. We talk about that with the Mercury retrogrades. We can also apply that to the Venus retrogrades. We will renew, review, release patterns around our Venus issues. Well, what are our Venus issues? What does Venus rule over? She rules over our relationality and our values, our love, our money, what we value in life, our valuables. She rules our relationships, how we come together with each other. She rules all of the women in our lives. She rules where we find beauty, creativity, balance. And she rules, she rules our five senses and how we engage with the world through our sensual self. So these are the places in our lives where we'll be renewing, reviewing, and releasing patterns. Love, money, values, sensory self relationships, women, beauty, balance, all of the Venusian things. This, I, I, this uh, beautiful pre-Raphaelite painting really speaks to that sensual nature of Venus and the awakened senses of, I mean, you don't know, smell those roses, right? And feel the kiss of the sun. So we will renew, review, release patterns around our Leo energy. That's what's different about this retrograde. So what are the Leo issues? Leo works with our self-love. Leo works with self-worth, self-expression, heart, courage, and visibility. Look at this beautiful Venus under, um, looks like a disseminating moon with the lions. I think this really evokes the feeling of Venus and Leo. And the, also the feeling of that, you know, the little bit of foreboding, that journey that's coming uh, as Venus sets in the evening sky, that, that journey within that we are approaching. And this is the call that comes with that journey. It's the call to love ourselves completely, unconditionally, and ferociously. That is always the call of Venus and Leo. That is what Venus and Leo is here to teach us. But when Venus in Leo makes that internal shadowy underworld journey of reclaiming power, this is what she wants us to know. She wants us to be able to love ourselves completely, unconditionally, and ferociously. And I, I just think that this image is so evocative of somebody who has no trouble claiming all of their power 
and receiving all of the love that they deserve from themselves and from others. So where will all of this work play out in your life? Well, of course, you know that it's going to play out in the Leo house of your chart, because that's the house where transiting Venus is going to be going back and forth. So with any retrograde journey, what you have is the planet appearing to backtrack in the sky and actually backtracking through certain uh, degrees of the zodiac. So Venus is going to get all the way up to 28 degrees Leo, and then she's going to backtrack to 12 degrees Leo and go forward again to 28. We'll look at those exact numbers again in a minute, but it's important to, for you to know that that's what's happening in your Leo house, that she will be visiting those places three times in the course of her journey. I guess I'm missing an image there. Um, so it's not just Venus kissing that Leo house once and she's gone. It's she's gonna go forward, then she's gonna move backwards through the same territory and forward again. So she visits those placements three times and she activates your Leo house three times over the next five months. It's not only your Leo house that is pulled into this though. It is also all of your houses ruled by Venus. So those are your Libra houses and placements and your Taurus houses and placements. So your Leo house, your Taurus house, and your Libra house are the primary ones affected. We'll get, we'll get to some more in a minute. So will it be a big deal? How big of a deal will it be? Yes, it will be a big deal for you, especially if you have placements between, as I said, 12 and 28 degrees of Leo, but also between 12 and 28 of any of the fixed signs. So Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio. So by placements, I mean either planets, asteroids, or um, the angles of your chart or the nodes, any of those things between 12 and 28 of the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio. Then it's gonna be a big deal for you. You have a journey to go on. So should you be worried? Absolutely not. Nothing to worry about. This is an empowering transit and you are divinely guided. I don't know why my beautiful paintings aren't showing up. It's kind of sad, but um, here are the key dates for, for um, yeah, key dates for the journey. So we've already hit the first key date. That's why we're sitting here just a day or two after this. On June 5th, Venus entered Leo. She was also the brightest she's gonna be, the farthest away from the sun and brightest in the sky. On the 19th, she enters her shadow. So what does that mean? It means she has entered that zone of 12 to 28 Leo. She's still moving forward, but she has entered those degrees that she's gonna visit three times. So that's when she um, hits 12 degrees of Leo on June 19th. July 22nd, that's the big day. She stations retrograde. And that's when she officially begins that 40 day underworld journey. So the whole journey encompasses this time between June 5th and October 9th. But what we're doing between now and the 22nd is getting ready. We're preparing, we're starting to get hints, especially after the 19th of June, you're starting to get hints and notice. What are the issues that are coming up in your life around your Leo house, around your Venusian issues. Even if you don't know your chart that well, it's okay because you can just use those list of, lists of qualities that I gave you and notice what's going on in your relationships, especially your relationships with women. Notice what's going on in, around your money, around your values and around your expressions of love. So we start to feel when she enters her shadow, we start to get a little preview of what our deep work is gonna be about. And come July 22nd, she enters into those 40 days and 40 nights of retreat from the upper world. And that's when we can expect to have the outer experiences that may come to us from the retrograde, the stories that play out in our lives. And that's when we can expect to be really doing that juicy, empowering and important inner work of retrieving lost parts of the self. So around August 6th, depending on where you are on the planet, 
Venus will disappear from the evening sky. That's when visually she really embarks on her journey. On August 13th, we get to the middle of the retrograde when she meets with the sun. And that is a very magical day. That is Venus in the heart of her retrograde and exchanging energy with our beautiful solar light. And that is a day you should, if you don't mark down any of the other dates, that's a day you should mark down because that is a day when things will be illuminated for you. Important revelations from within and um, outer experiences that may light up exactly the issue that you need to know about. So Venus is meeting the sun. It's always a beautiful transit. It's always a very potent moment when it's in the retrograde cycle. Really, she's, she's entered that solar inner sanctum, and it's a very magical day, August 13th. August 20th, also another magical day. I mean, the whole Venus cycle is just so infused with magic and symbolism. But around August 20th, again, depending on where you are on the planet, is the Venus morning star apparition. All that means is she shows up. She is the priestess of the morning. She is the morning star. And we start to see her at a little before sunrise in the Eastern sky. So she's completed her journey, even though she is still retrograde. <clears throat> so that's August 20th, we see her. And then shortly after that on September 3rd, she's gonna station direct. We're done with those 40 days of retrograde. And finally, on October 7th, she leaves her shadow. Then we can say we're done on October 9th when she leaves the sign of Leo and enters Virgo. So there she is, Venus on the move in her chariot drawn by doves. And what is going to happen for you? You definitely shouldn't be worried about this one. This is, after all, Venus is one of the benefics. And even difficult Venus stuff is still Venus. And her job is to bring more love, more balance, and more beauty into your life. So even if you're dealing with some uncomfortable issues, it truly is all for the good. And this isn't, this isn't like the, the transit of a malefic where you need to hunker down and prepare for something difficult. Prepare for challenges, yes, especially if you have 12 to 28 of the fixed signs but they are such life enhancing challenges that we, we should be excited for those of us with those fixed placements. If you're curious to know what exactly is gonna happen for you individually, well, you have been here before and this is the beauty of the cycles. You have been here before. Every eight years, Venus retrogrades in the same sign. So she was retrograde in Leo in August of 2015, 2007. 1999, take a screenshot of this, 1991. If you're getting a little older, like I am, then you remember back to 1983 and maybe even 1975. So what you're going to experience this summer will be an echo of those times. Now, a question that people often come to me with when they see dates like this, maybe something happened to you during one of those summers that wasn't so great. I am not saying that you're gonna have a repetition of outer events, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm asking you to look back at something a little more subtle. What was the inner transformation? What was the turning point that was happening for you around your Leo house in August of those years? So this is by no means meant to instill fear if there was something going on in one of those years that was not a great moment in your life. I'm not saying that's going to repeat. This is, that's, this is not as simple as that. What I'm saying is the inner transformation, the movement towards self-love, the awakening of your Leo house, wherever that is in your chart, you will see echoes of that <clears throat> during all of these years. It's really worthwhile. Like I said, write these dates down or take a screenshot of this and spend some time after the call just looking back. If you keep notebooks or um, at least for the first couple of repetitions, I use just my, my, um, my photos on my iPhone is sometimes the best way to look back at what was happening in August of those years and try to find the story because you will find a connecting thread and that connecting thread is going to offer you a lot as far as awareness of what's coming for you this August. It will be an echo. 
So those cycles are really important. Do you know what this is? This is the beautiful start of Venus. This is the actual pattern that Venus traces in the sky in relation to Earth. Over the course of eight years, she makes this beautiful five-pointed star. Where we sit during the retrogrades is in these little enfoldments of the petals. These are the retrograde periods. So we only have Venus retrogrades in five signs. That shifts over, over centuries, but we only have those points in those five special signs um, during any epoch. And where we sit is in the, the, that deepest enfoldment of the petals. It's so poetic, right? That these are the points where we sit during the retrogrades when Venus comes to kiss the sun in that, um, that uh, inferior connection. Um, so there it is, that beautiful uh, sacred geometry of the Venus cycle writ large in the sky, taking on taking us on this journey towards the heart, the, the heart of that rose, right? Think of the rose symbolism and how sacred and beautiful that is and how often the rose is associated with the goddess and especially with the heart of the goddess and with that heart of self-love. And those cycles matter. Astrology isn't just about marking these linear events on your calendar and now something exciting is happening and now there's another exciting transit. It's easy to kind of get, uh, get caught up on astrology online and these kind of see it as these ever unfolding different transits that play out on a linear timeline. But the deepest wisdom of astrology is about the embodiment of these repeating cycles. I think we're really taught in our culture to feel bad if we find ourselves back at the same place again in our lives. But this is what nature does. This is how nature creates beauty by returning again and again to the same place. Think about day and night and the seasons and the beautiful phases of the moon and the earth moving around the sun. These are all repetitions of a cycle. They're repetitions. That's how we create the beauty, just like this beautiful Venus rose. This is created through repetition, taking us back to the same place again and again so that we can know it better each time, so that we can move more deeply into our own heart and into our own wisdom with each repetition of the cycle. That is the real embodied wisdom of astrology, the mystery of cyclical time. That is at the heart of astrological wisdom. When you understand cycles and you understand how the planets move through your life, you can read charts easily. It isn't just about learning a bunch of linear keywords. It's about learning to embody those cycles and to see that repetition and to see how the planets move in and out of our lives again and again, just like that beautiful Venus rose, again and again coming to us with the same lessons in a different way so that we can deepen in our sense of belonging in the cosmos, deepen in our understanding of ourselves and others. And in this case, especially with Venus and Leo, deepen into self-compassion and self-love. So now I have to tell you how you can go further with this. With